of Introduction to Business. Hopefully, by now, you've gotten your book, Understanding Business, the 12th edition. Please review the syllabus, as you can buy this book used through the bookstore or purchase the ebook version through McGraw Hill directly. Also, please note that this week you'll have an assignment due where you'll have to write a one page paper in length, and we'll go over that shortly. Addition, additionally, you'll have to uh, complete this video and participate in the discussion panel for attendance. Let's talk about chapter one. Chapter one, taking risks and making profits with a dynamic business environment. Well, chapter one kind of is a primer. It's a introduction to business concepts that we'll be discussing this semester in class. We'll be talking a little bit about what business is and some definitions of what entails business. So let's talk about business in general. Business is any activity that seeks to provide goods and services to others while operating in a profit. Now many times you can hear that businesses can either provide a service or a good. Goods are tangible products such as computers, food, clothing, cars, and appliances. While services are intangible products that can't be held in your hands, such as education, this class is a service. Healthcare is a service. Insurance, recreation, and travel. Successfully filling a market need means you could make money for yourself. And that's important to note. The good a good starting point for any business is to determine a need or a want within the marketplace. Because if you can do that, then you're going to have a more successful business than if you pick something that there's no need or want uh, in the business environment. For instance, let's pretend that you live in Antarctica. Selling popsicles might not be a good business venture in Antarctica. However, selling parkas or some uh, wool hats probably would. Again, it's all about doing your due diligence and seeing what the marketplace wants and needs. An entrepreneur is that person who risks time and money to start and manage a business. In fact, many entrepreneurs uh, start a small business. 85% of the nation's businesses are considered small businesses under 10 people. Revenues, profits, and losses. Let's discuss these terms. Revenue is the total amount of money a business takes in during a given period by selling good, goods and services. These are all, this is all your sales. These, this is all money coming in. Profit this is the amount of money a business earns above and beyond what it spends for salaries and other expenses. And we'll talk a little bit about your costs, uh, your fixed costs and variable costs in and, and further chapters. And a loss is when a business's expenses are more than its revenues. So obviously, as a business person, you want to profit and uh, earn an income, and you want your business to profit and be more successful. Matching risk with profit. Risk is the chance an entrepreneur takes of losing time and money on a business that may not provide, may not prove profitable. It's important to note, not all enterprises make the same amount of profit. And businesses take risk, but with big risk could come big profits. And usually what happens is the more risk you take, the more opportunity you have to make more profit. Standard of living and quality of life, these terms are used when discussing economies, uh, especially when we talk about different economies of different nations. The standard of living is the amount of goods and services people can buy with the money they have. Now, we'll be discussing globally uh, 
but uh, the United States actually has one of the highest standards of living in the world. Workers in other countries may, may make more money, but prices for products are often higher. And you hear about this a lot in the European Union, that uh, workers in other countries have more time off, they make more money, but also, it, you know, products cost a lot more over there. Now, the quality of life, this is the general well-being of society in terms of its political freedom, natural environment, education, health care, safety, amount of leisure, and rewards that add to the satisfaction and joy that other goods and services provide. A high quality of life requires a combined efforts of businesses, nonprofits, and government agencies to provide it to their citizens. So the quality of life is commiserate with the efforts that all three of those areas contribute. Let's talk about the stakeholders of your individual company. Now, stakeholders uh, are is a common misconceived terms because uh, some people think stakeholder is a stockholder. Well, that's not true. A stakeholder is Stakeholders are all the people who stand to gain or lose by the policies and activities of a business and whose concerns are, a business, are the business needs to address. A primary challenge is to recognize and respond to the needs of the stakeholders. Now, if we're talking about a company, the stakeholders would obviously be the employees, the management, the consumers who buy the product, the uh, the people who sell the company supplies to make the product are good. Uh, you know, their families. So there's a lot of individual stakeholders, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Outsourcing. Now, this is contracting with other companies, often in other countries, to do some of the functions of a firm like production or accounting. Many foreign companies are opening offices and factories in the United States which is called insourcing. For example, down the highway here on 40, we have a huge Volkswagen plant. Volkswagen is obviously a German company, and uh, they, open, they open a lot of offices and factories in the United States. So, you remember, so I was just discussing some stakeholders. There's many, many stakeholders in a typical U.S. business. Bankers, stockholders customers, the community the business is in, environmentalists, dealers or retailers, employees, government leaders, suppliers, and the media. Now, all these individuals have a direct connection to that company. Using business principles in a nonprofit organization? A nonprofit organization is an organization whose goals do not include making a personal profit for its owners or organizers. Nonprofit organizations use financial gains to meet social or educational goals. And your discussion assignment, which we'll talk about at the end of this presentation is to identify a nonprofit that you've either volunteered for or worked with in the past. Now nonprofits are different than for-profit organizations, especially how they were created. Now we'll talk about in a future chapter we'll we'll talk strictly about a nonprofit uh, setup and we'll even talk to a uh, a high-ranking official for a nonprofit organization. We'll have them in as a guest speaker. The importance of entrepreneurs to the creation of wealth. So there are some positives and negatives to being an entrepreneur. Obviously, the positives are the freedom to succeed, the ability to make your own decisions and determine your own time, and possible wealth. These are big, big positives to being an entrepreneur. In fact, I hear a lot 
when I talk to entrepreneurs that why did you go out on business on your own? Well, I wanted to make my own schedule. But often, they're the ones that are working till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night because it all relies on them, right? And these are some of the negatives of being an entrepreneur. Um, you may fail, and it's all relying on you. There's no paid vacations. There's no, hey, boss, I'm taking my two weeks off. Uh, and there's no free health insurance. You have to pay. You have to pay for your own health insurance. And now, you know, it, 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 it's an interesting tightrope to balance, you know, the freedom of being an entrepreneur and not, you know, receiving the benefits of working for a company. And that's something that you have to ask yourself what you feel comfortable with. Now also this uh, semester we'll be talking about the five factors of production. Now these are the resources used to create wealth. And the five factors are land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and knowledge. When we talk about these, right, land is the area where you're going to have an office or be uh, located at, right? Your labor force, that's an important aspect of production. The capital or your, uh, your machines or your um, necessary uh, ingredients and things that you have to gather to uh, make your product. Entrepreneurship, obviously, um, the ability to go out and, and, and start a business on your own, and as well as knowledge. These are five factors that are important in entrepreneurship. The business environment, this is the surrounding factors that either help or hinder the development of businesses. The economic and legal environment, tech, technological environment, competitive environment, the social environment, and the global business environment. Let's talk about each one of these, but let's talk about it in a visual format. If we take a look at today's dynamic business environment, right, it looks a lot like this visually. The economic and legal environment, freedom of ownership, contract laws, elimination of corruption, tradable currency, minimum taxes and regulation, right? These all have an effect on your ability to create a business and create jobs and manage a business. The technolo technological environment, this has, an, this has an effect on today's businesses, right? IT, databases, you know, having barcodes or SKUs, and obviously the internet. These all have an effect on your company and the ability to create more jobs. Your competition, right? The competitive environment. How good are you at customer service? How good are you recognizing the stakeholders, various stakeholders within your, uh, within and externally of your company? Employee service, concern for the environment. This is all affecting your business and job creation. And then finally, the social environment, things that are affecting your business, diversity, demographic challenges, and obviously family changes. These are all things that can affect your business and the way you manage your business. So let's talk about the evolution of U.S.-based businesses. Well, in the 1800s, the agricultural industry led economic development. And then in the 19th and 20th century, the Industrial Revolution hit. And this meant the opening of factories and, and um, different assembly lines. And it moved the jobs from the farms to the factories. As technology improved productivity, fewer workers were needed in factories. Progress in the service industries. Service industries make up over 80% of the value of the U.S. economy. Since the mid-80s, the service industry generated almost all the increases in employment. 
There are more high pay. There are more high paying jobs in the service industries. Think about the service industries. Think about all the restaurants. Think about all the different things uh, that are out there now. And if you were old enough to remember the 1980s, you didn't have as many options as you did then. I remember I had uh, we had one restaurant in town. And now you can go down to Turkey Creek and go to over 40 restaurants. And right now the future of business is kind of interesting because we're in the midst of an information-based global and technical revolution. Think about it. 20 years ago, if you wanted to open up a business, you would have to rent a space and open up a storefront. Now, thanks to the internet, you can th sell things online and reach all areas of the world. It's kind of amazing how the how uh, connected we are in a global market. We're truly turning into a global market, and that's due to the technology technology that we have now, like the internet. So I hope that you um, will join me on this journey all semester as we discuss these in length. Obviously, uh, wrapping up chapter one, I'd like you to read it. And then uh, we have an assignment that's due. Um, and chapter one's assignment, let's talk about it real quick. So chapter one's assignment, let's pretend that you're starting a business. In fact, let's pretend that you're starting a restaurant. I want you to answer the following questions based off of what we just talked about. Number one, who's going to be the various stakeholders of your business? What are some of the things you can do to benefit your community other than providing jobs and tax revenue? Three, which of the environmental factors that we outlined in this chapter might have the biggest effect on your business? business, meaning restaurant. How is that? So I want you to go ahead and write this paper, and it only needs to be about a page in length, and answer those three questions. Uh, APA, MLA formats, fine. Uh, I'm looking more at the substance than uh, the, the formatting of the paper, so don't worry too much about the formatting of the paper. Just answer the questions in complete sentences, and I'll be fine with it. But again, starting a restaurant, these three questions, make sure that you read chapter one and obviously review the PowerPoint. And then I also want you to go over to the discussion tabs because starting tomorrow, uh, there will be a discussion about nonprofits. And again, I want you to participate as, a, as your attendance. Have you ever volunteered for a nonprofit or been involved with a nonprofit? And tell me about it. So, again, welcome to Intro to Business, and I'm glad that you're here.